Hello again 102. In this video we will begin chapter 29, the conservative revival from 1977 through 1990 and we'll identify the factors that led to the election of Ronald Reagan and the rise of the conservative movement. And no sooner had President Carter, Jimmy Carter, been elected in 1976 than conservative Republicans, the new right, had mobilized to defeat him. And their plans for a Republican revival centered around Ronald Reagan, the great communicator. And he was a tall, square-shouldered, plain-speaking, handsome Hollywood actor and a two-term California governor and a prominent political commentator. Reagan was not a deep thinker, but he was a superb reader of the public mood and an outspoken emotional patriot and a committed champion of conservative principles. He first worked as a radio sportscaster after graduating from Eureka College in the depths of the Depression in 1932, and then he started his movie career in 1937. He served three years in the Army, making training films during World War II, and at the time, as Reagan recalled, he was a Democrat, a New Dealer to the core, who had voted for Franklin D. Roosevelt four times. And after the war, he became president of the Acting Professions Union, the Screen Actors Guild, where he honed his negotiating skills and fended off communist efforts to infiltrate the union. And he testified before the House Un-American Activities Committee a few times. And he supported Harry S. Truman in 1948, but during the 1950s, he decided that federal taxes were too high. And in 1960, he campaigned as a Democrat for Richard Nixon. And two years later, he abandoned the Democrats and joined the Republican Party. Reagan achieved political stardom in 1964 when he delivered a rousing speech on national television on behalf of Barry Goldwater's presidential candidacy. And soon thereafter, wealthy admirers convinced him to run for the governor of California in 1966. And he won in a landslide. Now, as the Republican presidential nominee in 1980, Reagan set about drawing a vivid contrast between his optimistic vision of America's future and Jimmy Carter's bleak outlook and mediocre leadership. President Carter, he claimed, kept saying that our nation has passed its zenith. My fellow citizens, I utterly reject that view. Unlike Carter, Reagan insisted that there was nothing wrong with the American people and that there were simple answers to the complex problems facing the United States, though they were not easy answers. And he pledged to end many of the federal social welfare programs, increase military spending to win the Cold War, more on that in another video, dismantle the bloated federal bureaucracy, reduce taxes and government regulations of business, get government off our backs, and appoint conservative judges to the Supreme Court and federal courts across the nation. He was successful in doing that. He also promised to affirm old-time religious values by banning abortions and reinstituting prayer in public schools, and he ended up doing neither. Blessed with a baritone voice and a wealth of entertaining stories, he charmed audiences with his folksy stories and captivating smile. Reagan rejected Carter's assumption that Americans needed to start getting along with less, to accept a decline in our standard of living. He instead promised boundless economic expansion. By reducing taxes and easing government regulations of business, he pledged that the engine of free enterprise capitalism would spread prosperity to everyone. This is one of the big factors now is the rise of the new right. And there's a huge population growth in the conservative Sunbelt states. And by 1980, social developments had made Reagan's anti-liberal stance a major asset. An increase in the number of senior citizens, a group that tends to be more politically and socially conservative, and the steady migration of people, especially older Americans, to the conservative Sunbelt states was shifting the political balance of power towards Reagan's philosophy. Fully 90% of the nation's total population growth during the 1980s occurred in the southern or western Sunbelt states, while the northeast and industrial states of the Midwest, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, uh, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, the Rust Belt, experienced economic decline, 
factory closings and mass migration to the Sun Belt. I moved to Houston, Texas in 1981. The population shifts triggered a massive redistricting of the House of Representatives, with Florida, California, and Texas gaining seats in northern states like my home state of New York lost representation and electoral college votes. There were tax revolts in the late 1970s. In June of 78, tax rebels in California, with Reagan's support, succeeded in putting an initiative known as Proposition 13 on the state ballot. And an overwhelming majority of voters, both Republicans and Democrats, approved the measure, which slashed property taxes by 57%. And this is the beginning of California's budget problems, ladies and gentlemen. And they amended the state constitution to make it more difficult for local and state governments to raise taxes. And they're going to have problems in the 21st century because of that. And the Prop 13 tax revolt in California soon spread across the nation, leading the New York Times to call it a modern Boston Tea Party. There is another factor, the rise of the Christian right. And a look at the right side. The Christian right saw protests against Supreme Court rulings that reinforced the separation of church and state. And here, in a 1984 protest organized by the Moral Majority, students chant, Kids Want to Pray, in support of an amendment to reinstate prayer in public schools. And basically, this is a crusade. The Christian right has a crusade against liberalism, feminism, and abortion. And they were conservatives with a faith-based political agenda, again, that includes the prohibition of abortion and allowing prayer again in public schools. And by the 1980s, Catholic conservatives and Protestant evangelicals owned powerful television and radio stations. They operated their own schools and universities, and they organized mega churches from which such televangelists like the Reverend Jerry Falwell launched their cultural crusade against the demonic forces of liberalism at home and communism abroad. And that Ronald Reagan became the hero of the Christian right reflected the candidate's rare communication skills, for he himself rarely attended church services, and he had no strong religious affiliations. However, white evangelical Christians, alienated by the liberal social agenda of the Democratic Party, especially policies regarding abortion and endorsement of gay rights, became a crucial element in Reagan's electoral strategy. And we've already talked about the anti-feminist backlash. Anti-feminists like Phyllis Shafley, a conservative Catholic attorney and Republican activist from Elton, Illinois, they stopped the ERA as we previously mentioned. It failed by three states to get the required 38 for ratification. And Reagan highlighted his support for traditional family values, gender roles, and rights of the unborn, which helped persuade many Northern Democrats, mostly working-class Catholics, the traditional New Deal coalition, to switch parties and support Reagan. And by 1980, the national conservative insurgency had become a powerful political force with substantial financial resources, carefully crafted ideas, and grassroots energy all of which helped explain Ronald Reagan's presidential victory. And Reagan's supporters during the 1980 campaign loved his simple solutions, upbeat personality, genial humor, and they responded passionately to his recurring question at campaign stops. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Their answer was a resounding no. President Carter had not been able to gain the release of Americans held hostage in Iran, nor had he improved the economy. His approval ratings had sunk below those of Richard Nixon, ladies and gentlemen, if you can believe that. And Reagan's thumping of Carter signaled a major realignment of voters in which many so-called Reagan Democrats, conservative white Southern Protestants, and blue-collar Northern Catholics crossed over to the Republican Party. And this is the election of 1980. Reagan has a resounding electoral vote difference. John Anderson was a third party candidate and he got about 7% of the vote. And Carter only wins six states and about 35 million popular votes. Reagan had a pretty good 
uh, distance between him in popular vote as well. And with the growth of the Sun Belt in the late 70s and early 1980s, this is a big factor that contributed to Reagan's victory because this is a very conservative part of the country. And Reagan reflected all of those different qualities and people responded very well to what he had to say. And in the next video, we will go over Reaganomics in more details about how this really, the Reagan era will affect American society.